host, Bill Griffin. Welcome to Different Take Podcast. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Really appreciate you watching. New episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today I want to talk about the United States House of Representatives campaign, uh, the elections coming up in November, of course, in Georgia's district, 7th district. Mark Gonsalves is GOP nominee, and it's Democrat Lucy McBath, who's an incumbent, and she has been asked to uh, participate in an interview and is, uh, hasn't answered uh, at all, been non-responsive. And I have done an interview with Mark Gonsalves, and that uh, is on the channel. I encourage you to watch that. But I'm going to play some clips for you and then talk about the incumbent's position on these questions as we understand them from her Facebook postings and other public comments. We'll start with inflation. This is what Mark Gonsalves had to say about inflation. This uh, biden McBath inflationary spiral that we have going on, nationally 9.1%, as you know. In Georgia, it's actually higher. It's 9.8%. And here's the thing about inflation. It's the most hideous form of tax bill to the people who can least afford it. So this party is supposed to be the party of the downtrodden, the working men and women. And they actually perform just the opposite. They've become the party of the elite coastal class. That's who they represent. And that's why socialism and really full on communism, Marxism look so attractive to them. So on Lucy McBath's Facebook page, the word inflation appears three times since the beginning of the year. And she's posted many, many times on her Facebook page. This particular, this is an example of what you will see. On hashtag Labor Day, I'm proud to honor the hardworking Americans who support our nation and our economy. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, good paying jobs are placing workers in sectors that drive America forward. Really? So there's nothing there that says anything other than this big slush fund, very corrupt for big business, supposedly going to help reduce inflation for hardworking Americans or give them jobs. In these three posts that have the word Inflation Reduction Act, she never explains how this is actually going to reduce inflation. Everybody knows that's a joke. She either thinks we are incredibly, incredibly stupid or and, and will buy this lie or that her constituents just don't care. They just don't care about prices going higher. I think Lucy McBath wants to increase the size and scope of government. And if the, if the dollar is being devalued is the way to do it, uh, she's happy with that. The interesting thing is Congress caused this problem by racking up enormous, enormous debt, which sort of forced the hand of the Federal Reserve to expand the money supply. They enabled Congress. There's no doubt about that. But they're both uh, culpable. And then the way to fix that problem is to guess what? Spend more. So that is what Lucy McBath's position on inflation is. I don't care. I want to spend money. I want to spend your money because it gets me power. It keeps me in office. It buys me votes. This is what Mark Gonsalves has to say about balanced budget power. I can tell you that. What do you think it will take for Congress to pass a, a balanced budget? Oh, it, well, first of all, it's going to take great resolve. And I don't know if we have it. You know, one of the things that I pride myself in is because I'm an outsider to this, I do have the courage of my convictions. What I see in Congress is not only don't the players in many cases have the courage of their convictions, but Bill, they don't have any convictions at all. They just go wherever the political winds blow them. Contrast, looking at Lucy Bass Facebook page, webs or campaign website, and the Congress uh, office's website, 
There's no mention from her anywhere that includes balanced and budget in the same sentence. I doubt you're going to see the word budget anywhere in any of her postings. She doesn't believe in a balanced budget. This is what Mark Gonsalves had to say about the federal debt. We are over $30 trillion in debt. But have you had Congress elevate this problem to a meaningful conversation? No. I was talking about this in the 2020 race. And at that time, it was $22 trillion in debt. Now we're over $30 trillion in debt. And we still don't have a conversation. What does Lucy McBath have to say about the federal debt? As far as I can tell, nothing. Moving on. Here's what uh, Mark Gonsalves had to say about the United States southern border and, uh, well, all borders as far as that goes. What do you, what do you think is driving the, uh, the Biden administration to have these um, open border policies? They want to reshape America. You've heard them say it now. They're public about it. They're talking about a liberal world order. That's not a phrase that I came up with. That's a phrase that's coming out of this administration in Joe Biden's mouth himself. That should make every American pause because a liberal world order is code for a one world government, a new world order. Every country has the right, I would argue, it's an obligation to its citizens to secure their borders and enforce their immigration law. And we're doing neither. What we'd rather do is sick 87,000 more IRS agents on the American people. That's why I'm for the fair tax, which, by the way, was born in Georgia's 7th district. And what does Lucy McBath have to say about immigration and the border? She says she wants comprehensive reform, look this up, or nothing. That, and basically, nothing is going to happen. That's I've heard that for years and years and years. Comprehensive. It means nothing. Nothing will happen. When people say that, they're not interested in doing anything. It's a code word for nothing. So that's where she's at with the border. This is what Mark Gonzalez has to say about the United mm -hmm. States tax code. Taxation for the fair tax. So it's a consumption-based tax. The two things I like about it is number one, it creates an environment where everyone now would have a stake in the funding of their government. And at the same time, taking into consideration a person's circumstance, right? And then number two is would it be able to do away with the IRS as we know it today? And that would be a very positive thing. I can find nothing Lucy McBath has said about the tax code. She's not interested in simplifying it. She's not interested in consumption tax, or she hasn't thought about it, doesn't care, or they say it, but she may not be smart enough to understand uh, the importance of changing the tax code and what an impact that has on people. She voted for expanding the IRS, but no interest in a change in the tax code to uh, something that would work for everyone. So to turn to Lucy McBath for just a second, what is she interested in? Well, she's posted many, many, many times on the subject of gun control. She doesn't believe in the Second Amendment. She expresses no support for the Second Amendment. Apparently, she wants to get rid of all guns for everybody. Uh, although she doesn't come out right and say this, but she posts about this so often and makes so many statements about it. Well, that could be the only logical conclusion that, uh, that anyone would have. She doesn't believe that you should have the right to defend yourself. I counted 37 posts on this subject. Far and away more than, well, inflation. She didn't even, she's never posted anything about inflation. She's th posted some on climate change, but to gun control even far surpassed what she's posted on uh, climate change. This is an example of a post, Facebook post that she did on gun control this year. 
She says, we are paying for the weapons of war on our streets with the blood of children sitting in our schools. Assault weapons are designed to kill other humans. They do not belong on our streets, in our churches, in our, or in our schools. I'm proud we voted to hashtag ban assault weapons. Okay. Um, the use of the term assault weapon implies that many people don't understand this. When you pull the trigger, multiple bullets do not fly out of the weapon. Those weapons are illegal. They're already illegal. She's referring to weapons that are they're rifles. They just look a little different. She's posted some really outrageous things in regards to what uh, the statements that make no sense regarding guns. On the other hand, Mark Gonsalves supports Second Amendment. This is what Mark Gonsalves has to say about Section 230 and big tech. And if you don't know what Section 230 is, it gives liability protection to big tech companies and it, well, any platform, but it's specifically helpful to big tech because they, they can't be held liable for anything that they post yet. They get to decide what they will, what they will censor. So they get to publish things without any downside. This is something that's kind of important. Lucy McBath thinks nothing about this. There's not one word that I can find that she's ever uttered on this topic. So she's perfectly fine with big tech. She's perfectly fine with them having this kind of power. This is what Mark Gonsalves had to say about it. Uh, Section 230, which is part of the Communications Decency Act. I refer to it in regard to the overreach by big tech today. Big tech has far too much power. And what's happened is big tech has used that power to be able to censor conservative voices including the sitting president of the United States of America at one point. That wasn't that long ago. This is really important. And yet, do we have any uh, uh, convictions on this in Congress? No, not at all. Why not? We bring them forward to various hearings, right? We have the Zuckerbergs walk in there. We have the Twitter guy walk in there. We have the Google guy walk in there. And what do we accomplish? We get some nice talking points for members of Congress to take back and fundraise with their constituents, and yet nothing happens. It only gets worse. Again, Lucy McBath, apparently could care less, has said nothing about this topic. Lucy McBath apparently believes in a completely unfettered right to abortion. She's posted about abortion many times. Though she doesn't come out and say this, it's clear that must be her position because she mentions no rights for unborn children. This is what Mark Gonsalves had to say about this. I'm a constitutionalist. So anything that wasn't a provision in our constitution that should be assigned to the states, I'm in favor of. So now with the reversal of Roe v. Wade, which was an opinion from our Supreme Court, it was never a law. Uh, but having said that, we do have our law here in Georgia. And of course, every other state has their law. And that's the answer to the abortion question. Uh, by the way, I want to apologize. I said that Lucy McBath is incumbent. Uh, she's not incumbent. She was elected in the 6th District, so she chose to move to the 7th District. This is uh, what she said after her primary win to take on Mark Gonsalves in the 7th District as Democrat. Tonight, I came to give one speech but I am now forced to make another. Because just hours ago, we paid for the weapons of war on our streets again, with the blood of little children sitting in our schools. We paid for unfettered gun access with phone calls to mothers and fathers who have gasped for air when their desperation would not let them breathe, who have sunk to their knees when their agony just would not let them stand. It was the phone call that every parent fears. It's a, a singular fear, an all-consuming fear, a 
a love so deep for our children that we wake up in a cold sweat worrying, is my child okay? If you listen to this, ask yourself, is she talking about the rights of unborn children? Lucy McBath is not talking about the rights of unborn children, although the words would apply. Now, she's talking about gun control. She's trying to take advantage of another tragedy, saying the same tired thing she's been saying many, many times for apparently many, many years. The interesting thing about this speech is that is the only topic she addressed. She didn't mention inflation. She didn't mention anything about the border. She didn't even mention abortion. <laughs> She, apparently, this is the only issue that she cares about, uh, at least it's far and away. Not one that most people care about, something that really impacts people, uh, she is not that interested in. I can find very few comments that Lucy McMath has made of any sort of substance, kind of touches on the topic regarding education, on, uh, although it, she makes it very clear She's in favor of the federal government top-down approach to education. Federal government should have control. This is what uh, Mark and Solves had to say about education, particularly in Gwinnett County. That's why I'm for, by the way, abolishing the Department of Education. We spend $102 billion on the Department of Education. We started it in the early 70s, if you remember, right? We've created this behemoth of a bureaucracy. Well, at the time that we created it, we were the world's leader in education, literally top of the class. Anyone that thinks that our school systems are functioning well, given the fact that we spend in Gwinnett County $2.8 billion, by far the biggest budget in the state of Georgia, for our education. We hand over 180,000 of our most important possessions, our children. We have the largest employer in Gwinnett County, our school system, 24,000 people are employed. And now we're number 66. Which is where the 7th District is primarily situated. And also, this is Mark and Solves on the topic of term limits, which I'm fairly certain Lucy McBath has a completely opposite opinion. I was the first in the 2020 race to actually pledge uh, for term limits. I really, really believe that our founding fathers never intended for uh, members of Congress or the presidency for that matter to be a career. Now we do have term limits with our president, right? At one time we did not. So to think that Congress would be immune from term limits, I think that the presidency itself is a sign that it can be done. Now the question, the question becomes, how do you get Congress to vote themselves out of a job? That, you know, that's a heck of a question, right? That's a very, very good question. No, no, I don't think Lucy McBath would be for term limits. And one of the reasons is it's, it's power. The uh, Democrat Party has always been the opponent to term limits because they want to stay in power <laughs> individually. It's their business. They want to be there as long as they possibly can. Lucy McBath, in my opinion truly believes in the, that the federal government, we should increase the size and the scope of it. There's no boundaries what government can do for the people, but the fact of the matter is it takes two incomes uh, for working class people to make it, and even then they have to get extra jobs and so forth and so on. Now you've heaped the, um, the terrible problem of inflation and Democrats have taken this strange approach where they just don't want to talk about it, and she falls in line with that strategy. This is a serious, serious thing that America's experienced before, and the political consequences, uh, as I said in another video recently, uh, 1980, the election, inflation was a huge deal. Ronald Reagan won 44 states, but yet Democrats don't want to talk about it. And one of the reasons they don't want to talk about it is because many of them know they are to blame for the problem. So Lucy McBath has not one word that makes any sense at all on 
uh, what the cause of inflation is nor what the solution is. She also has uh, no, no opinion on the balanced budget, the amount of federal debt. Uh, I realize those things are kind of intertwined, but she has nothing to say about that nor about protecting the border. She only talks about comprehensive reform. That means nothing. That means I will do nothing. She doesn't talk about Section 230. Her position on abortion is really quite extreme. She's willing to send uh, weapons of war to Ukraine, but then talks about uh, preventing uh, Americans from preventing them from exercising their Second Amendment uh, right. Lucy McBath talks about diversion, equity, inclusion, justice, equality, anti-racism, and that sort of thing. A lot. A whole lot. But ignores the things that people really, really are affected by. Instead of things that people really care about, she posts about things such as this. Happy National Dog Day to my favorite workmate, Harley. We love you, even if you tend to sleep on the job. If this were a one-off thing, she posts about these sorts of things all the time. All the time. That's fine if she'd also deal with the important issues of the day. She's not talking to her constituents. She's not explaining to them. And the media is, does not push uh, for uh, this to happen either. They don't push for interviews uh, with Lucy McBath because the Democrat gets passed. Or they focus on things that really don't matter. So I, I know this episode is a little longer than usual, but I wanted to compare and contrast Lucy McBath with Mark Gonzalez. I think... The choice is pretty clear on who the best uh, person to represent uh, the dist- 7th District of Georgia is, and that's Mark and Sauls. So I hope you vote for him. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, and let me know what you think. I really appreciate it.